There is no question. I'm not in Louisiana anymore. I'm not even in the real world. I met someone this afternoon. I don't think he's real. He's either a hallucination or a demon. I'm just not sure which. I had essentially chosen a cutoff at random when I couldn't find the gas station again. And 20 miles later, there was a man walking along the shoulder. I was almost too afraid to stop, but he got on his knees in the middle of the road, begging. In the end, I needed someone to talk to more than I cared about the possibility of being murdered. He claims to know a little about what's going on here, and though his story is completely unbelievable, I can't come up with an alternative. He doesn't know how or why things are the way they are, but he got here by driving through a tunnel just like I did, except he was in Pennsylvania. If he hadn't told his story first, I wouldn't have believed him. It sounds too much like my own. The only difference is what happened after he ran out of gas. Since he started a quarter tank, he had no idea anything was wrong yet. A service station appeared around the next curve, exactly as it had for me, and based on his description, it sounds like the same one. The Palms TV came on, and after a brief weather report, there was another confusing public service announcement. And don't forget to stock up for tomorrow. As usual, our stations will be closed for Sunday. No exceptions. Please ensure all persons are cleared from the premises by no later than 11.59 p.m. And thank you for choosing Last Stop Station. Until next time, safe travels. After filling his tank, he went inside to find a nearly empty store and only then realized there were no other cars or people inside. Since the pump worked, he reasoned the store must be open and worried something may have happened to the clerk. Rob went outside to search for a signal, and when he was unsuccessful, he noticed the store was at the bottom of a steep price. There was no trial, but he was able to make it up fairly easily. Unfortunately, he still couldn't get reception. Determined to drive back to town, he made his way down the slope only to find the store and his car gone. He swears he walked in a straight line and found the road easily, but it was empty. If I weren't for my own experiences these last few days, I couldn't have believed it. But now I definitely do, assuming Rob is actually real, of course. He had no choice but to start walking, and he headed in the direction he believed would take him to town. Several hours later, he still hadn't seen another car or store, and the sun was beginning to set. That's when he ran into Bonnie and Clyde. At least that's what they called themselves. They were stopped at their own gas station, and Rob ran straight inside to tell the story. But the couple didn't want to hear it. Clyde held Rob at gunpoint while Bonnie loaded their van. The couple wouldn't give him a ride. But the man was willing to answer a few questions while he waited. Based on what this guy told Bob, there are three stages to the back roads, each more dangerous than the last. The paved streets are the outskirts and make up stage one. The dirt roads are stage two and lead deeper into the maze, while stage three is tire tracks in the grass and the heart of the maze. The entrance can be found almost anywhere in the world if you venture deep enough into nowhere, but the exit can only be found in stage 3. 
gas stations only appear when a vehicle is low on fuel, and they disappear the moment you leave. Had Rob climbed the hill before filling his tank, he would still have a car. Thank goodness, I have the camping gear, or I would have made the same mistake when trying to heat my soup. The only exception to this rule is Sunday. If you run out of fuel while the store is closed, you'll have to sit there until it reopens. Anything that was inside when it disappeared will still be there except for people. We don't know what happens to them. But Clyde said there used to be four people in their group. The other two decided to see where the place went when it disappeared. But when it came back, only their bags and clothes were left behind. The stores supposedly have beer and junk food in stage two, and that alone has me interested. I finished my whiskey last night, and I don't think I can handle this place sober. I would already be on my way now if it wasn't past midnight. Compared to the last two stages, the paved streets are fairly safe until the transition to dirt. That's where the stranded like to lurk and what Rob was on his way to becoming before he found him. The ones who lose their vehicles can make gas stations appear and eventually turn to the forest for shelter. They hide deep in the dark woods during the day, and only came out at night. The lucky are able to join an existing group or form their own. They need enough members to ambush travelers, but not too many to feed. Those who are rejected get eaten, and those who try to survive alone starve. Eventually, they begin to look like the ones I saw, and had I been asleep with my doors unlocked, I would have become their dinner. As for stage two itself, Rob only knows that something haunts the road at night, and when he asked Clyde about the final stage, the man went white as a sheet and refused to answer any more questions. As the couple got back into their vehicle, they apologized for their drastic behavior, stating they simply couldn't risk taking on a stranger. Rob is bitter about it, but I don't blame them. If I hadn't been alone and desperate, I would never have stopped. From what it sounds like, people try to find the exit in stage three and the ones who survive the failure resolve to a life on a paved streets. I've been thinking about it all evening, and I would rather die than leave the rest of my life out here. The fact I don't want to spend six days a week inside a gas station upset Rob pretty bad. We argued for three solid hours until I pretended to agree with him. He repeated his same argument with a slightly different wordings like I was simply too stupid to understand. I was sick of it, but more importantly, I was starting to suspect Rob would crack me over the head and steal the truck if he didn't get his way. Since the stations will be closed tomorrow, I made sure to run out of gas this evening. I told Rob three times to let me get my phone ready before he got out, but the bastard didn't listen. Before I could put the truck into park, he jumped out and rushed into the store. I heard the TV start the second his door was open, but he was completely oblivious. I panicked and missed whatever it was saying while fumbling with my phone. The only part I got recorded was the until next time, safe travels bullshit. I'm grateful for the information Rob has shared, but I've decided to go ahead alone. I wish I would have thought to leave him 
at this station this evening. But I can't waste another day waiting for them to reopen. I don't feel safe sleeping while he's around. Tomorrow morning, when he uses the bathroom, I'll just drive away. I don't know what else to do. For now, he's either asleep in the back seat, or really good at fake snoring. My instincts are screaming for me to stay awake. And I felt like someone poured salt into my eyes. And staring at the screen is only making them worse. I need to find another way to keep myself up.